Okay. So I was here, right? So somewhere over here I was. Once you attain the desired speed, you will hold the uh, the accelerator pedal to some level, right? So from there, that point onwards, uh, you will be administrating fuel uh, in a step manner. That is, constant uh, fuel is uh, uh, pumped into uh, the engine. Okay. And let's say you want to overtake a particular vehicle. So probably at that time, you will uh, uh, press the accelerator pedal uh, in an impulsive manner in an impulsive manner, rather in a jerky manner. So whenever you give an input uh, in a jerky manner, uh, basically it follows a kind of parabolic function. Okay. And the last part, last part, okay. So it's like the impulse. Let's say you want to pop up a wheelie from your two wheelers. Okay, so what you will do is you will rev up the engine and then you just uh, let go the accelerator, right? So that is pretty dangerous because a small, uh, uh, what do you say, mistake uh, make you to uh, 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 fall from the bike. Okay, so such input can be regarded as an impulse input, nothing but a sudden acceleration. Okay, so you're not supposed to attempt this. Any doubts uh, till now? Have any doubts? Just uh, let me know. You can unmute and you can start asking the doubts. Uh, I've enabled my microphone. I think uh, I'm audible to all. Okay, now can you see the picture? Can anyone confirm? Can you see the PDF? No, sir. No. Okay, now can you? Yes, sir. Okay, all okay. right. Sorry about it. I hope there will not be any more interruptions. Fine, so let's look at the standard inputs. All right, so first let us consider a step input. I guess uh, about these inputs, you have studied in signals and systems, right? If yes, I can quickly uh, you know, finish this particular portion. Yes, sir. I think you have studied in signals and systems. All right. So step input. For electrical engineer, it is a DC input. For mechanical engineering students, it is something like constant force function. OK, so this is how we represent a step input. OK. And in time domain, you can write R of t, OK, which is nothing but uh, the input expressed with respect to time. And x-axis, uh, you have taken along x-axis time as the independent variable. So R of t is equal to A for t greater than or is equal to 0. And input is 0 for t uh, less than 0. In case of Laplace domain, uh, when you apply Laplace transformation, R of t becomes R of s, and A becomes A by s, OK? Where A is called as amplitude of the step function. And if you set A is equal to 1, R of s is equal to 1 by s, which is called as unit step function. So next, you have ramp input, ramp input. 
Okay. Example for ramp input would be the rate at which uh, the accelerator pedal is, uh, you know, pressed. So that could be the example for ramp input. So ramp input is R of t, and mathematical equation is a into t. Okay. So if you set a is equal to one, it is called as unit ramp function, and R of t is equal to zero for t less than zero. That means to say only in quadrant one we are considering the ramp function. And in Laplace transformation, um, a t becomes a by s square. Okay. So step is a by s, ramp is a by s square. Next you have parabolic input, which is also called as acceleration function. Okay. Example could be um, the um, uh, rate at which uh, fuel is uh, 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 pumped in, in a rocket engine. The velocity function may not hold good there. So you need uh, a very quick, uh, what you say, response. So to get that quick response, you know, rapidly you're supposed to uh, uh, inject uh, the fuel into the uh, combustion chamber. So basically in uh, rocket engines, you know, a parabolic uh, type of uh, uh, fuel admitting system is used. All right. So R of t is a by 2 t square. That is the mathematical representation of parabolic function. And R of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0. All right. So in Laplace domain, um, when you apply Laplace transformation, OK, uh, basically it is t to the power n can be written as n factorial divided by s raised uh, n plus 1. So that's the formula for converting uh, t to the power n function into Laplace domain. So you would get R of S is equal to A by S Q. And if you set A is equal to get unit ram function. Okay. So you can just remember like this. Step input is A by S, ramp input, A by S square, and parabolic input. It is having one degree higher than um, ramp input, right? So you would get R of S is equal to A by S Q. And finally, we have uh, uh, impulse function. Okay. Impulse function is pretty interesting function because when you do the testing, uh, rarely we see that uh, impulse function is, uh, 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 you know, uh, subjective. Okay, um, that's because your impulse function, okay, will have very larger uh, amplitude. Okay, and this impulse function persists for, you know, for a very very small uh, duration of time. And best example for impulse function could be the lightning bolt, you know, struck on a power system or a substation, right? So you have uh, several uh, uh, instruments in substation, transformer, uh, needs to be uh, uh, tested for uh, impulse function. Okay, so basically, CPRI, Central Power Research Institute, what they do is uh, they try to inject uh, uh, the lab generated uh, lightning bolts onto these systems and they try to you know evaluate the performance against uh, uh, impulse function. Okay, only in uh, uh, you know uh, such cases uh, we use impulse function with uh, a very large amplitude. Okay, however. In most of the lab testing scenario, we will not consider an impulse function with a very large amplitude. Instead, we consider impulse function with unit amplitude. Okay, that's called as unit impulse function. So probably in uh, S and S, uh, you have evaluated uh, uh, you know uh, the system performance using uh, an unit impulse function. All right. So if you consider the lightning bolt, the lightning bolt will exist you know for a uh, microsecond to nanosecond but in this small time interval you know it can dump several of energy onto a device okay so that's the example for uh, impulse function okay and the shock experienced by uh, a person sitting inside the car you know during crash scenario can also be regarded as regarded as an impulse function. Okay, so that's the reason you know all these automobiles have been tested for uh, different uh, crash uh, scenarios, 
head on collision side on collision etc etc all these uh, uh, testing scenarios uh, can be considered as kind of uh, uh, impulse uh, functions okay. finally let us uh, sum up by collecting all the information step input r of t is equal to a r of s is equal to a by s ram at and rfs is equal to a by s square parabolic at square by 2 and in laplace it is a by s cube impulse r of t is equal to a. and in laplace domain also we take it as a okay we will not take it as a by s because a by s is represented by step okay. because it is independent of time you can say impulse function it doesn't depend on time at all all right so that's about your standard test inputs okay short notes they can ask this uh, uh, standard uh, test inputs all right okay. now comes the steady state analysis part okay. your steady state analysis is consisting of majorly two parts how much time a system takes to attain the steady state value okay so that is called as the settling time the time taken by the system to attain steady state value is called as settling time but settling time uh, we will be uh, finding out transient response so this you know let me keep it aside uh, we will uh, consider this settling time in transient response okay the second important part of steady state analysis is to check um, check about the output all right in the sense uh, how far is the uh, actual output from the desired value? That means to say, is it very close to the desired value or is it uh, uh, far away from the desired value? Okay. So that is basically called as steady state error. Okay. So under steady state analysis, we our aim is to find the steady state error. Okay. So for next 15 minutes, we'll be just talking about steady state error. Okay. So before deriving steady state error for you know, different systems, first let us consider the concept of steady state error. Mathematically, what expression you can write for a steady state error. Okay. So consider a block diagram okay, connected in a, a negative feedback manner. Okay. G of S represents forward path transfer function. H of S represents um, feedback path transfer function. R of S is the input, C of S is the output, E of S is the error signal, and B of S is, is the feedback signal. All right. So you can um, basically collect some information at this particular summing point. So error signal E of S is the difference of R of S and B of S, and as R of S minus B of S. Where, where you can substitute H of S, right? Your B of S is C of S into H of S. And also C of S is nothing but the output of G of S block, right? So input into G, E, right? So E of S into G of S. Okay. So substitute everything in uh, B of S expression and you know, group uh, like terms together. So you would get error signal E of S is equal to reference signal divided by one plus G of S into H of S. Okay. So this is the expression for error for a, a typical uh, a negative control system. Okay. Sometimes uh, we consider unity feedback control system. If at all you deal with the uh, uh, unity feedback control system, in the denominator, you can substitute 1 in place of H of S. So you would get your denominator as 1 plus G of S. Okay. So that's for unity feedback control system. Okay. If in case you consider a positive feedback, then in the denominator, instead of plus sign, you are supposed to take minus sign. Only that is the difference. Um, here you can see some product, right?
Okay. Here you can see some product in the denominator, G of S into H of S. The product G of S into H of S is called as the open loop transfer function of a closed loop feedback system. Okay. So this product plays very vital role in the known as stability of the system. So to find the steady state error, you know, basically we will be evaluating G of S into H of S. Now, to find the steady state error, we have to go back to time domain. But your error signal is expressed in um, Laplace domain, E of S. So how do you go to time domain? So you can go to time and uh, I mean, making use of uh, steady state, uh, uh, sorry, uh, final value theorem. OK, so by using um, final value theorem, you will be able to uh, relate Yes domain entities to time domain entities. Now, what is this final value theorem? So final value theorem states that when you are subjecting time to infinity, that is limiting f of t to, I mean, you are subjecting f of t function to a limiting uh, condition, that is t tends to infinity, um, which is equivalent to limit yes tends to infinity, yes into f of s. So this is your um, Final value theorem. So you using final value theorem, you can write the steady state error E double S is equal to limit T tends to infinity of E of T. Okay, E of T is nothing but Laplace transformation of E of S, which is equal to limit S tends to zero. Okay. So general form is Text f of s is e of s. So simply substitute in place of f of s, e of s, okay. where e of s is Laplace transformation of e of t. Okay. So when you substitute e of s okay, in this particular equation, what is e of s? e of s is here, r of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s. Okay. So you would get the error, which is the steady state error as limit yes tends to zero okay yes stays here and in place of e of s you substitute the error signal which is r of s divided by one plus g of s into h of s okay so minus sign is for positive feed and plus sign is for negative feed. so in time domain okay the steady state error can be found by applying the LHS sign. On the other hand, in Laplace domain, because we want to stay in Laplace domain for most of the time, because analysis is you know, very simple in Laplace domain. So you can find steady state error in being in Laplace domain by applying this formula, limit S tends to zero, S into R of S divided by one plus G of S into H of S. So if you inspect equation five very closely, you will see that the steady state error E double S depends on R of S, which is the reference input. So that's the reason we talked about you know, reference inputs um, earlier. And it also depends on the product G of S into H of S, which is called as open loop transfer function and some non-linearities. Of course, we are not going to consider any non-linearities in uh, linear control systems. Okay, So it depends on majorly R of S into G of S into H of S. Okay. So I have borrowed 20 minutes time from Mandula Madden. So I'll take about 15 minutes to complete this uh, static error coefficients. Okay. Static error coefficients. What is it? we will eventually, we will come to know. Okay. So, okay. You consider a system in which the input is step input. Okay. Um, so, you can write R of S is equal to A of S. Right. That is the Laplace transformation of step input. 
So steady state error E double S is equal to, we have already seen this formula, limit S tends to zero, S into E of S, which is equal to apply the limits and then substitute in place of R of S, the expression for R of S, which is A by S. So what will happen when you substitute? In the numerator, S and S are going to get canceled. So steady state error, you will get it as limit S tends to zero. In the numerator, you are left with A divided by one. It is independent, not extend the limit to this uh, unity function. Instead, you can extend you know, uh, limit to g of s into h of s. So that is what is written here. So your steady state error for a step input, you know, becomes e double s is equal to a divided by one plus limit s tends to zero g of s into h of s, where the term limit s tends to zero g of s into h of s is taken as kb, and kb is called as positional error constant or coefficient. Okay, so when you substitute this entire term with kp, your steady state error becomes a divided by one plus. So graphical interpretation, you can see somewhere over here. The straight line is your expected output. You wanted your output to be constant, but your actual output is approaching your expected output in an oscillatory manner. And after some time, you know, the output is attaining its uh, steady value, but with a steady state error of A divided by one plus K. Okay, so this is about uh, the estimation of steady state error when a uh, step input is given. Similar example, let's take ramp input. Uh, its description in Laplace domain is A by S square. And you try to find out the steady state error, E double S, which is limit S tends to zero, S into E of S. See, remember one thing, this formula will not change. Okay, see, this formula will not change. All the times you will be taking limit S tends to zero, S into R of S. Okay, what you have to do is you have to simply start changing the inputs. Okay, in the second case, in place of R of S, you substitute A divided by S. So what do you get in the numerator? A by S. So that S can be pushed on to the denominator. So the simplified expression is here. You would get E double S is equal to limit S tends to zero. A divided by S plus S into G of S into H of S. When you extend the limit, what will happen is this S becomes zero. And you will be left with S into G of S into H of S, okay, and the uh, limiting function. Now, the term limit S tends to zero, S into G of S into H of S is taken as KV, and KV is called as velocity error coefficient, okay, because the input is velocity uh, function, hence it is called as velocity error coefficient. And when you substitute KV in place of this limit function, you would get the steady state error as A divided by KV. And the graphical interpretation could be of this. Okay. Um, the straight line is your desired output. And your actual output, you know, um, uh, follows your desired output in this manner. Okay. Initially, there will be some transient uh, uh, output. And eventually, it will find its steady state value. The difference between actual output and desired output is the steady state error, which is A divided by K. Okay. And finally, you can consider the parabolic input. Later, you will be left with S squared. When I push this to denominator, what do I get? A divided by S square plus S square into G of S into H of S. Okay. The first function is a single S square term. And when you apply the limit, this becomes zero. So basically you are left with the second term. So the second term can be 
taken as ka which is called as acceleration error coefficient and the steady state error e double s can be written as a divided by k and the graphical you know interpretation is given here a parabolic desired output and your actual output will you know find its steady value after going through a set of transients okay eventually your out, uh, actual output settles down to a final value but with a finite uh, steady state error which is given by e double s is equal to a divided by k a okay. so this is about the steady state error all right is it clear till now any doubts just let me know okay oltf stands for open loop transfer function short form oltf is open loop transfer function any doubts okay fine the summary for a step input error coefficient is kp and steady state error is a divided by 1 plus kp for a ramp input error coefficient is kv which is found by finding out you know by subjecting s into g of s into h of s to a limiting function and the corresponding steady state error is a by kv for an acceleration function the steady state error is a divided by ka you can see here kp is independent of s kv is s into open loop transfer function ka is s square into open loop transfer function so that's about the steady state error the second part is something to do with the transfer function okay so sometimes you know popularly you i mean these are the very popular viva question so in control systems lab uh, the external you know he may give you uh, some transfer function and he he may ask you to find the type of the system so type and order of a system can be found uh, based on some logic so type of a system is obtained by identifying number of poles at the origin okay what do you mean by poles at the origin one by s term is nothing but poles at the origin you have if you have one by s cube then you can say that there are three poles at origin okay so by identifying the number of poles at the origin you will be able to tell about the type of a system but to talk about the type of a system you have to keep the transfer function in a particular manner okay uh, you have to keep it in something known as time constant form format you must be uh, uh, aware of uh, time constant format uh, one plus est form is nothing but the time constant form all okay. right so different types of you know transfer functions so basically you can uh, represent a given transfer function in three different ways the very popular way is to express the transfer function uh, with the help of some numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial okay g of s into h of s as i said in the beginning this g of s into h of s is open loop transfer function of a closed loop system okay so g of s into h of s is expressed in terms of Uh, some numerator polynomial and some denominator polynomial. Okay, so numerator polynomial, I have taken m as the degree, and in the denominator, I have taken n as the degree. Okay, now order of a system. Okay, first let us consider order of a system. Order of a system is nothing but the highest power of denominator polynomial. It is as simple as that. the highest power of denominator polynomial it gives the order of a system for example 
let's say you have the following system. In numerator, you have s square plus 2s plus 1. And in the denominator, you have s to the power 4, so on and so forth. So to talk about order of a system, you have to check what is the highest power of s in the denominator. That is 4. Hence, we can say that the order of this particular Similarly, in example two, we have a simple system, which is just consisting of one integrator. So integrator is nothing but one by s. And what is the highest power of s in the denominator? It is unity. Hence, you can call it as or um, first order system. Okay. So by tracking the highest power of s in the denominator polynomial, one can talk about or one can identify um, the order of a system. Okay. The second format is called as whole zero format. I think you are aware of poles and zeros. You must have studied it in DSP as well as in signals and systems. Okay, poles are nothing but roots of the numerator, sorry, denominator polynomial. Okay, poles are nothing but roots of the denominator polynomial. For example, if you equate the denominator polynomial, that is s cube plus 2s cube plus 8 s square plus 4 s plus 1 to 0, you will get four roots because it's a fourth order equation. So for this particular equation, there are four poles. Okay, what are those? That is immaterial. Are nothing but roots of the denominator polynomial. On the other hand, zeros are nothing but roots of the numerator polynomial. So in example one, we have a second order equation in numerator. Hence, we will have two zeros. Okay. So example one will have two zeros and four poles. Okay. So that's your pole zero formula. Okay. So basically you can factorize a numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial to get the pole zero format. And it could be arranged in this manner. Okay. G of S into H of S is equal to k into s plus z1, z2, z3, so on and so forth, till zn. Similarly, in the denominator, you can write s plus p1 into s plus p2, so on and so forth, till s plus pn. Okay. Where z1, z2 up till zm represent zeros of the system, and p1, p2 up till pm, you know, represent the poles of the system. Okay. So this is your second uh, transfer function form, which is called as pole zero form. The third format is your time constant form. Okay. In module one, while deriving um, the transfer function of a DC servo motor, we had used this form, right? We had kept uh, the inertia term and the resistive term outside the bracket. By doing so, we could get some form something like 1 plus s into tau m, tau a, etc, etc. So that's your uh, time constant form. Okay. So time constant form is obtained by taking out the constant terms from uh, the numerator polynomial as well as denominator polynomial. Okay. And once you keep the transfer function in time constant format, you can identify what is the highest power of s in the denominator. Okay. So in the denominator, you will have some integrators, right? Because one by s is called as um, integrator. So highest power of s in the denominator gives type of a system. Okay. So type of a system is nothing but uh, the number of poles present in the origin which is given by the highest power of yes. Okay. For example, you consider this equation. Okay. Denominator, you have um, S cube term. So one by S cube is nothing but um, three poles present at the origin. Hence it is called as a type three system. Okay. So if you have, say for example, I'll go back. Okay, this example, if you consider. How many poles do you have at origin? You have only one single pole. Hence, it is called as type 1 system. So example 2 is first order system as well as type 1 
system. Okay. What about this? What is the system type of this? Can anyone tell me? SQ, S to the power 4, what is the type of this system? To find the system type, you first arrange this transfer function in time constant form. Once you arrange the transfer function in time constant format, then you will be able to talk about the type of a system. Probably in the WhatsApp group, probably in the afternoon, you know, you can ping me the system uh, type of this particular example. All right. All right. So that's your uh, type of a system. Okay. So I'll close here. Okay. Let me see. Um, uh, today afternoon, uh, can we meet about uh, 20 minutes? Because I want to finish this portion. Okay. It's very interesting, analysis based. Okay. So I will uh, close the class now. Okay. And in the afternoon or maybe in the evening, I will let you know about the uh, timing. All right. So if you have any doubts, you can ping me separately or I will wait for some time uh, to clarify your doubts. And those who don't have any doubts, they can uh, exit from the classroom. Okay. Thank you. I am presenting the content. Oh, yeah. But it is fine, you know, Google Hangouts. The only thing is what is. Okay, I think... Uh...